I think you have a beautiful voice. Okay, okay. Oh! <laughs> no, yeah! No, I'll go around and come back. This is the activity center at First Baptist Church in Wilmington, North Carolina. Every Wednesday, Burmese refugee children and other international students gather in the upstairs classroom for pizza, laughter, and assistance with their schoolwork. From helping younger ones learn how to read to helping teach high school algebra, we spent time socializing with the kids and helping them adjust to both American culture and the English language. Throughout the course of our research, we were able to hear about life in Thailand, the situation in Burma, the cultural differences between America and the Karen, as well as any other piece of information the kids were willing to share with us. They were always happy to see us, and we learned a lot from each other. The Karen, the specific group of refugees that we worked with, have a tough life here in the United States, but it is much better than what they had in Southeast Asia. Along with tutoring the kids, we conducted a few interviews with people directly affected by the conflict. We also did some background research to help us better understand the conflict in Burma and the reason for all of the refugees to have been displaced. This was our research on Burma. There has been internal conflict in Burma since before their independence in 1948 from Great Britain. The conflict exists between various ethnic and political groups that are at odds in the region over land disputes. Initially, the Karen attempted to separate themselves from an independent state in southern Burma. Ethnic rebellions arose and political insurgencies dropped in numbers as foreign states lost their interest. As of today, most of the groups have signed uneasy ceasefire agreements. The armies still do not trust local peoples and are viewed as enemy occupation in some regions. This is the longest ongoing war in the world. Human rights are commonly overlooked in Burma, human trafficking being a major issue. Since Burma's independence, 210,000 people have been killed. In just 2012, this year, well over 10,000 people have been killed in political strikes. Over half a million people have been displaced in eastern Burma. Thailand provides humanitarian aid along the border, including several refugee camps. This is where the refugees here in Wilmington that we work with are from. All of this research helps us better understand their situation here in the United States and the situation in Burma. Okay, we also wanted to interview a Burmese family that lives here in Wilmington and whose kids are involved with the activity center and who we tutor on a regular basis. Okay, and did you live there your whole life? No, 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 Okay. Why did you move to Thailand? Were you forced to leave um, Burma or was like by choice you went to Thailand? I get away. I went Monday why were the were the schools shut down because of the war? Yes. Okay. And so, do you guys, when you went to Thailand, or the, your family, um, did your the, your whole family go, or like the whole community, or was it just a small number of people? 
Okay, maybe you pull up a kettle, could you? The whole family. The whole family. How did you end up coming to the United States? Oh, oh, gotcha. Oh, behe, ne, behe, kaplule, aniga, UN, H, temle, UN, UN, H, C, R, atakarugurum, awiti, atakarugurum, awiti, chuva, huni, behe, tuva, luka, America. How long were you in Thailand before you went to the United States? Did you learn in Thailand? You were only for one year. Did she learn? Thirteen years. Thirteen? Yes. So is it thirteen years living in um, refugee camp, like yeah. tents and yeah. that kind of thing? Houses. Or houses. Okay. Okay. And you were able to go to school in Thailand those during that time. <laughs> Are you happy to be here in the United States now? No, I'm happy. Yeah. Not happy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for letting us ask you these questions. And inviting us into your home. We also got the opportunity to interview an expert, Robin Manning, who's the refugee coordinator at First Baptist. I'm a volunteer and um, volunteer with the refugee ministry and also with the church. Um, it's one of kind of like our, our missions of our church to, to help these families find um, a place of worship, a place to, to help these children succeed in school. And you mentioned the family. Could you kind of tell us about how you discovered them directly? Um, there was an article in the newspaper that they needed some volunteers to help with some refugees from Burma um, or Myanmar. Um, the family refers to it as Burma now, but it's mm -hmm. Myanmar. Um, and, and they needed, where they were having a settlement here in Wilmington, and um, they said that they needed volunteers to just take them to the store and help them get acclimated to American culture. They don't know how to lock the doors. I mean, they just didn't grow, you know, they didn't live, grow up in an area like we did. There's lots of um, settlements, there's like some in New Bern, I think, and, um, you know, all across the country, there's New Bern, there's a lot of people, uh, a lot of refugees that are living in Chapel Hill and High Point, and they just started a, a settlement here, so, and, um, I think there's, I mean, maybe about, I know that there's over, like, maybe over 100 now. Um, we got the tutoring part um, started in our church. First, we, we started um, as, we started ESL program, um, helping teaching English as a second language on Sunday mornings to the adults. And then that trickled into them starting their own church or worship yeah. service at our church. And um, that, there's a pastor and there's people playing music and just like how they would in Thailand. Um, that they that they had their um, their worship service. Um, then there's a bunch of kids who need help with homework, and we'll have about about 26 kids come um, with their homework and their backpacks, and we eat pizza, and, and some kids from UNCW come over, and <laughs> some um, people within our church um, help, and it's just spectacular. Yeah. Um, the family that we first got connected with, um, it was a uh, actually a. a huge unit of a family. It's grandparents and or parents and their children and their grandchildren. So it was like a family of twelve came over and the family that um, that we work that we work with, they they had to flee their village um, twelve years before they moved to America. So they had to flip flee their village in, in Myanmar, Burma and travel to or by foot to the refugee camp in Thailand. And they had to leave when their daughter was three days old. They in um, one of the interviews that the grandfather gave that I heard, and and the girl asked him what he thought it was to be Karen, and he thought it was it meant that you're alone. That that's what um, you know that that's what they did was just run and flee and they are they plan to go back. All of them want to be heroes and be missionaries there. And
Thanks to these interviews and our research, we are better able to understand the complicated conflict in Burma.